Imagine fighting a raid. Using the strongest defense ever created that can win a thousand of them in less than three days. Well, a defense that powerful looks like this. Two months ago, I challenged myself to max every stat in Minecraft, including the raids triggered in one stats. However, after testing the most popular raid farm designs, I realized none of them actually increase your stats. So I needed to somehow win a thousand raids using a farm that doesn't exist. But first, ooh, look at that. That is my luck right there. However, the problem wasn't how hard the raids were, but instead how long they would take. A level one raid has seven rounds, costing up to 15 seconds each to spawn so theoretically it would take 28 hours to win a thousand of them well that excludes the 130 hours of killing illagers and the additional 160 hours of getting a thousand bad omens i'm not gonna lie i kind of want to upload this year but it'll only take you a second to subscribe if we get to seven likes then i will literally breathe <gasps> However, before recording, I spent a full week brainstorming over a hundred different techniques and glitches to create the ultimate raid farm that will hopefully be better than these stupid fake farms and take less than 400 hours to complete. The first step is finding the perfect location. This village is great, except it's over a thousand blocks away from any outpost. And the village that's literally right next to one was destroyed thanks to lifesteal. However, we're in luck, since my friend here has the seed to the server, which will allow me to review the entire world on this map, and it appears the perfect location is 5,000 blocks away, in a, uh, a spruce forest. And the outpost is all the way up there. Well, at least this should be quicker than last time. No, no, no. All right, clearly I'll need to do some renovations. Since my current ETR, estimated time of a thousand raids, is still like 300 hours. So I'm going to use my second technique. Deforestation. Sure, it's pretty straightforward, but I gotta start somewhere if I want to abuse the crazy stuff like this. Don't ask me what this does, I don't know yet. I want to start with the foundations. However, I'm struggling to find where these guys keep spawning. I mean, sometimes I see them here, here, or somehow down there. I should definitely solve this by building something up there, but who wants to build when you could just... Now I'll spot the raiders instantly, but I forgot I need a village for a raid to spawn. Luckily, I did keep one survivor, so I should be fine. Oh, who the hell is fire aspect? What? What is that? Before it started, I installed the replay mod for situations like this, but apparently the villager that did survive what the f did I just say? But apparently, the villager did survive. Except a single villager doesn't count as a village. So you want to know how to turn it into one? You're so happy. You're so joyous. Look at this new land. Before I start another raid, I think it's time to cover this ravine. However, so far, I've been focusing on fighting the raids, which is only one of the three elements that will define my ultimate farm. So let's take a look at the second element, starting a raid. It takes a long time to find a pillager captain, but even longer time to return to the farm so i'm going back to my roots by building a bridge i would say this is pretty ugly but all bridges are perfect in their own way next is the lack of pillager captains problem currently i don't know any ways to make them spawn faster but there is one thing that i do know best and we got a pillager captain it's working already i expanded the bridge a bit more but there are a lot more ways we can make these raids easier i mean grand literally made an entire video about this next technique bamboo now the cool part about this is that i don't actually have to build a wall all i really have to do is just place in like a line like so oh i forgot about the grass situation but i tried ignoring it for as long as possible but eventually it was too much the reason why i didn't want to remove it in the first place is because you have to do this and then this yeah they literally can't get inside except they're pathfinding for this right here with these new changes my etr is now at 190 hours which is a big improvement from earlier but definitely not enough for a good upload schedule however this next change may bring me close to the theoretical limit all right see on the map up there i got a big plan all right eventually all of this is going to turn into a giant flat piece of land first i want to calculate the radius of where the raiders could spawn wait 
Is that another village? But since doing it in person is hard, I'm going back in the replay to figure it out. Wait, I just realized. Did I destroy the ground and then replace it? Hold on. I destroyed the ground. And then wait, wait, check this. Watch this part. I fill it straight back in. The block I destroyed, I just fill it up. What? Why? What is wrong with me? I began marking coordinates down to start doing the calculations. However, I just realized I could have just looked it up. Now, if the radius calculated, I can start making a perimeter. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. And the only reason why this looks cut off is because we have a giant mountain covering the perimeter here. But don't worry, it is the same size on, bro, as the same size on every side. But yeah, it's time to flatten out this entire place. Now, flattening an entire mountain is no easy task. So I'm gonna build a beacon here. Next, I need to connect the lines together to finish the perimeter like this. However, I ran out of nether bricks, so I'll grab some more. Whoa, oh my God. I went through the nether portal, it was a big mistake. The reason why I had so much nether brick was that during the preparation stage, I wanted to get five beacons, which required 15 skulls. So I planned to build a wither skull farm. However, I ended up getting all of the wither skulls while grinding the nether bricks for the farm. At least they're being used for some type of farm, but these raids feel slower than usual. To figure out what was wrong, I logged out and booted up plants versus zombies. Instead of villagers attacking me, it's zombies. And instead of me defending, it's plants. I'm currently on wave 24 of endless mode, but there's one reason why I got this far. Compared to my raid farm, every open space is used for damage and damage only. While here, I have these mountains and this giant wall of bamboo. So I removed it. I'm so sorry, Green, but your strategies won't be enough to fix my upload schedule. But I still have a mountain to worry about. The worst part, though, is the fact that the beacon is out of range. And for some reason, I'm too lazy to move it. The second problem, however, is my tool's durability. I tried trading with villagers, but it got really annoying, and this isn't even my base. So I'm going to take a trip to the end. A lot of server members actually don't know about this, but on the other side of the island, there's a scary bridge that leads straight to a very broken XP farm. This will allow me to mine the mountain a lot faster. On a good note, I've finished flattening the mountain. Now I just have one more to go. This time, however, I'm actually moving the beacon in range, so hopefully this shouldn't take as long. Finally. Oh, wait, one block over here. Boom. The entire thing is done. Is the villager still here? Okay, honestly, the map doesn't look too different. However, we still have to fill in each of these tiles. The question, though, is what block do I use? Sure, stone is the obvious choice, but what about soul sand? I mean, typically it makes you extremely slow, but since I have soul speed 3 on my boots... Dude, I could be doing raids at such a crazy rate. I did the math, and I'll need about 63 stacks. But honestly, after mining two full mountains, this shouldn't be too hard. Luckily, I also lit the end portal next to my farm, so tool durability is just not a problem anymore. Finished filling in one tile, but I realized that if raiders can't spawn on soul sand, then I'm gonna have to break all of this. Yes! They can spawn on soul sand. Let's check this out. <laughs> I'm almost done filling in the perimeter, but something really strange keeps happening. Oh my! I don't know why I keep finding illagers through my portal, but I won't worry about it for now because I want to take a look at this map. Oh! <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Yo! This looks disgusting. All right, let's try it right now. I started a raid to test it out and the soul sand was fantastic until they spawn below it. Oh my god, no! The most annoying part is fixing the giant ass holes that are made by these creepers. Since the raid farm layout is working well, I think I'm gonna do the same for the outpost. The only problem is that I'm getting lasered by all of these pillagers. But at least I can trap the captains in boats. Since the spawn radius for the outpost is a lot less than the raids, I thought I wouldn't need a beacon, but I'm gonna make one anyway. And it looks like they can spawn below. That's great, but while rebuilding the beacon at the farm, 
I noticed there was no raiders. I was literally checking everywhere until I saw this. Isn't this also great? However, I think it's time to do something I really should have done earlier. I've been running back and forth across this mountain for every raid while I could have just used the nether. I even added trap doors for that 1% extra speed. Doing raids alone has been getting pretty lonely though, so I invited some friends to help. And if I actually invited some players here, then you'd probably see this place on a FinMC video. Oh yeah, the new army is here. They were absolutely useless. But every time it turned to night, I kept having to sleep so that I wouldn't have any creeper incidents. However, I think I'll save more time by just lighting this place up. I'm definitely making it harder for myself by trying to perfectly grid these out, but I really don't want more incidents like this. But actually now thinking about it, these lights are doing nothing to stop the illagers from spawning below. <gasps> So I'm completely blocking it off. Wait, where did my farm go? Just kidding, guys. I'm in my test world and trying to test some new defensive strategies. I calculated that this is the range where pillagers can't attack you. So if I place fences like this, the pillager can attack, but you can't. However, this all falls apart when you introduce an evoker. This fall trap seems to work, but there isn't an easy way to attack them back. Not you, not you. Wait, what the hell? These guys can spawn with banners? What did I just see? So without any ideas, I logged out and booted up Bloons Tower Defense 6. Instead of raiders attacking me, it's Bloons that actually don't do anything. Instead of defending, you're the one trying to pop them. Well, wait a minute. That's the solution. Make the raiders so incapable of anything that I'm the only one who could attack. A fun difference between skeletons and pillagers is that a pillager crossbow actually has durability. So theoretically, if this pillager shoots enough times and breaks its crossbow, then it'll be passive. I also realized halfway through that I didn't need to craft a full inventory of shields. But eventually... So, okay, you don't have the crossbow anymore. What if I take you out of the boat? Yo! What's good, dog? However, upon starting a raid... Oh, no. My friend, I don't want to do this to you. Okay, what happens if I put you in the nether? Where is the raiders? What have I done? This may not seem ethical, but you were originally trying to massacre a village. Well, back to the raid. Can the fucking raiders stop spawning outside of the thing? So to make sure this never happens again, I'm going to mine a little bit more of the mountain. I'm not sure how this will solve the problem, but I'll worry about it later because the banner chest is starting to get pretty full and I think they would look way better displayed. A little fun fact about banners though, is that you can actually rename it and it'll show as a waypoint on a map. I learned that one from Weefies, but I probably should have listened to more of his tips. After that, I think it's time to fix the outer edges. And to do that, I'm going to be placing slabs, since I'm pretty sure raiders can only spawn on solid blocks, but what would happen if I made this entire farm unspawnable? I mean, will the raid even spawn or would I instantly win? What the? What is this kid doing? All right, now with every tile covered and even the gaps completely spawn-proofed, it's time for the grand reveal. Where the hell did they go? Okay, that was a little disappointing. But now I should be able to control wherever they spawn. Nope. It's okay. I kept making new platforms, trying to get a single raid to spawn, but even when they did, I never got past the first round. I'm trying to figure out why my freaking thing doesn't work. And Plan Alert said it has something to do with raid rings, but I think I'm just going to spawn the raid right above my villager. I think that's what I'm going to do. It's because you suck. So I booted up a test world and recreated a version of the arena. Would a raid be able to spawn here? Let's just let's just test. Start to raid, and in theory, it should be able to just spawn right here. All right, cool. Let's see if that can happen again. Because honestly, this strat right here, just this just may maybe our option. Now I just have to build it on light steel. I think I'm gonna test this out now. Perfect. It's kind of hard to hit them, but you know what? All right, the raiders spawn, but it's definitely not easy to hit them. And the ravengers keep escaping. I guess I could add a rim around the farm, except I think I broke it. Maybe it was just a flu. I decided to add slabs so I can actually hit them, and to handle these vexes, I placed some boats, but that also broke the farm. If I can get the strategy to work, my ETR can easily skyrocket. But since I'm going to have to do a lot more testing, I'm going to place slabs below the outpost just so that the captains don't get stuck down here. A couple of hours passed of testing, and I ended up removing the rim entirely. Immediately after I did this, I completely 
completed my first raid in a very long time. At this point, I had used every idea I previously brainstormed and needed some inspiration. So I logged out and booted up Apex Legends. Instead of raiders attacking you, it's people. And it's actually nothing like fighting a raid. I also ended up dying a lot, so I returned to Minecraft. However, one of the people I was playing with was Jamato P, who had previously helped me wormhole thousands of illegal items into survival Minecraft. So I asked him what I could do to fix the farm, and he had a couple of suggestions. First, I needed to expand it, since raids can only spawn in a 5x5 area, so I have no idea how my previous design to even work. With this change, my ATR had gone all the way down to only 65 hours. However, Jamato P had an idea that could possibly surpass the theoretical fastest time. I was just thinking about this, right? Originally, I was thinking maybe like adding some like lava dispensers, maybe like a fall trap or something to try to kill the pillagers, but it's not even like killing the raid that's my problem. I finish it pretty fast. The problem is getting bad omen. But you know how if like I push one into the nether, they like I'm able to kill them and then get bad omen? What if I just like turn this into a nether portal? Easily could be one of my dumbest ideas yet. Not stupidest things I've ever done. I don't have high confidence in this working. It would be pretty funny though. The first test was great, but definitely not flawless. So I decided to invite Jamato P to my house to help me optimize it past the theoretical limit. However, if I go through this portal, it's I think it's literally a death trap. Okay. Oh, what? Oh sh. Oh my. I've been over three. <laughs> so he, I, I skipped the round loading because they go through the portal. But here's the problem for Avengers. Uh, not fit. Do you need a taller portal? I may need a taller portal. For some reason, any mob that is riding another mob can't go through portals. I attempted to make the portal taller, but I also picked up some blue eyes to make the process easier. However, I decided to take a trip to the stupid raid farm that didn't get me completion because I wanted to see how it handled jockeys, except it showed me something else. <gasps> I may die. Somehow, out of all the raids I've done, I died in the one that was supposed to be the safer option. I eventually came back to the farm, but I knew there had to be an easier way to get rid of the jockeys. I attempted placing signs in the middle so that I could possibly place lava above, but that obviously didn't work. I then tried to place blocks on the outside so that the illager riding the Ravenger would suffocate. But what if instead I placed lava on the outside of the portal? Well, it actually worked. So I switched the walls out for signs and got this. And boom. <laughs> okay, I need to stop watching. I need to stop watching next time. Starting now. All right. I think we're on world record pace right now. Okay, looking good. 15 seconds. Got bad omen. All right, started it. Okay, looking good. Second round already. Third round done. Fourth round out of here. Fifth round. Let's not die. Let's not die. Is that it? Stop the time. One minute and 16 seconds in total. I reached my theoretical limit. So, okay, let's think about this. So, we have a hundred wait then i already have 147 why haven't i been winning raids so i did more testing to figure out what went wrong and apparently you actually have to get a kill in a raid for you to win it however for the next 18 hours i will be doing one thing in one thing only first i bought a new bow from another player but when i went back in the nether the raid was missing this meant that other players were in the nether making them despawn which also meant i would have to find a pillager captain at the outpost i ended up searching for a video to help them spawn faster and built a farm that performed extremely well but even that was slow compared to what i had so after failing to build a Chunk loader, I decided that I would only grind at night when no one was online. That means I've lost around a hundred raids. That is really, really sad. We are at one thousand or nine 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 raids triggered. Oh yeah. Oh my god. A thousand raids triggered. If I had a 100% win rate, I would be done with the whole challenge, but sadly I, I have like another like two hours of raids to do. Alright guys, it's been a minute. We are currently at 
989 raids won. Come on, let's run this. 999. All right, I'm not even getting bad. You know what? We're going back to the to the beginning. We're going back to the roots to finish this. So you know, like how the heroes, like you know, in the hero's journey, how you start off in the ordinary world and you go on some crazy adventure, and then the hero comes back to the uh the original world, but as a changed person. That's me right now. That's literally me. All right, guys. It would be really funny if I lost the raid somehow and I had to go back to another village. And yep, there's but there's the vexes. There's the vexes. Woo! Vexes! Woo! Holy shit, I'm gonna die. You know, two and a half hearts is kind of impressive. I mean, I died during my thousandth raid. No one was on to see that. Get the hell out of here, man. A thousand raids. Yes! Oh my god, bro. And listen, you can click here for the next episode, or you can start from the beginning. But I think in the next episode, I, I have a very simple goal. And you know what? Just to make sure, just to make sure I complete it well. I lost another heart. I... Five... Where the fuck am 